thank you so much for being here on our podcast. We have a very special guest today, Ms. Holly Celiano. I'm going to read off her bio uh, verbatim as she has given it to me. Holly is a mother and a grandmother, a global influencer, a truth seeker, and has become renowned in the subject of the global reset. When she first learned about the currency reset over 13 years ago, something came alive within her and she knew this was her purpose. Her goal has always been and continues to be to expand her consciousness and evolve higher to help others expand in their path. She co-hosts Healing with Love with Dr. Matthew Singer, specifically focuses on how to heal ourselves through love and clearing our emotional body. She is here to help other truth seekers, higher workers, and to understand the new financial system when the QFS and the reset take place those involved will be better positioned to use their newfound prosperity for the betterment of humanity, others, and themselves. She has set up the New Earth Foundations, a global foundation to assist others in working together in order to help create global projects to help heal throughout the world. Holly, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, John, so much for having me on. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Thank you so much. So let's, uh, with your knowledge base, let's dive right into some meaty, substantive information, shall we? Sure. Um, keying in right now on the subject that most people are focused in on Iraq, they've recently this week announced that they have plans to do their reforms and the taxes and tariffs around the border, all in an effort to create a sense of internationalism. I'd just like you to touch on that and, and what that information means to you from your experience. So... Let's just go back. Iraq was having meetings this week in Dubai, and that was the 8th and the 9th, which is already over their time. That obviously is setting the stage for them to, they're, they're making alignments with certain world leaders around the globe. And they're setting the stage for themselves to be the international global leader that they are. Um, this meeting this week is actually a huge uh, tell sign as to how close we are to this taking place. So with their um, that alignment, and then also Putin was in meeting with the Saudi Arabians and the UAE this week. That's also huge for setting the stage for the new boss is in town, which is BRICS, and it's going to leave the U.S. currency by the wayside. So everybody's making their alliances with these big superpowers, and the U.S. dollar is going to become the first of the year, and Iraq has already announced it through their CBI. They are not using the U.S. dollar anymore. So the stage is set that unless this global currency reset is rolled out, the U.S. is going to be left in the dust, and we know that won't happen. So um, Iraq is actually going to be, and I've seen this, this stated, they will be as large as Dubai, if not more, more wealthy in their country. Their dirt is so rich with gold, you could actually kick it and see the gold, just find gold in their dirt. I mean, they have resources that we don't even know about that are are in their their land. So there is so much that Iraq is going to be a leader in the world very soon. And that's yeah. exciting. So go back to your question you asked me. I'm sorry, I went off on a tangent. Oh, no, no, you actually tied in a lot of things I was gonna ask you. So it was like, you bundled it nicely. No, just um, what is your take on in terms of what that signals in terms of to the world internationalism for their return to the international stage? Well, as you know, they have been um, suppressed since we went to war with them mm -hmm. and they've had to rebuild their country from the ground up, their government. And it's taken a really long time for them to be on a level playing field with everybody else and become an international um, currency, to become an international leader and to be part of the world stage. So, you know, Trump had mentioned a long time ago that all currencies around the world are going to be on a level playing field. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the ways to set everybody on a level playing field. And no longer are you gonna have suppressed nations that are, you know, like Vietnam. They've never revalued since we went to war with them. They have lived at a very suppressed rate with their currency. 
they're in the basket to go. All the other countries that have had um, their currencies suppressed, everybody will be on a level playing field. And Iraq really is the kingpin to setting this off for everybody globally. Yeah, very well said, very well said. I'm glad you brought up Vietnam because that was gonna be a touch point I was gonna touch on later, but we'll, we'll map it up now. Um, I often tell a lot of my viewers and, and colleagues, friends offline that I have firmly believed since the time I've been in this for nearly 11 years and you 13, that um, Vietnam was gonna be like the unsung hero because you get so much value for their currency because of the suppression, even more so than the dinar. And I was just talking to David Mahoney yesterday and we were touching on the fact that you were talking about level playing field based on assets in the ground and, and that Vietnam produces more things like Iraq does that most people don't know about. Like for instance, so, um, cinnamon. They coupled with Indonesia are roughly comprised of almost 60% of the world's cinnamon supply. And that kind of goes under the radar. So would you just kind of on the backs of that touch on Vietnam's power uh, as, a, as a world leader economically in the future once they revalue? Absolutely. Um, you know, we go to war with all these countries because they either have resources or assets that we want to control or technology that they have. And all these wars are man-made. And, the, you know, they're, they're, we're not fighting against the Vietnamese people or the Japanese people. It's all a man-made war. And it's all about controlling their assets or controlling their government. And that's going to be going away. No more is that going to happen. So Vietnam has so much wealth that has not been allowed to be revealed to the world. They'll be set on the world stage as well. It's actually such an exciting time for me to finally see, after all my years of being involved in this, to see this finally come to fruition and see these countries that have been held down for so long to be allowed to be who they truly are and not be suppressed anymore. And, and that's so exciting. I mean, we are on such a, an amazing time in our history that those of us that are aware of this and awake and know what's coming, we really are the forerunners. I mean, we will be written in history books that we were part of this. We were the, the you know, paving the way for all the other generations. And I do this, what I do, you know, being a mother and now a grandmother, I don't want my grandkids raised in the world that we're living in. I, If I have a voice and I have a, a way to make a change, then my purpose of existing is to speak up, be that voice. I don't want to you know, die on the other side and then say, well, like, you knew about this and you didn't do anything. Right. I will give it my all. I'll speak up. I will you know, do what I have to do to make the world a better place for future generations. Because if not, the world that they had planned for us, we are doomed. It is not a world I want to live in at all. Mm. I wanted to just touch base for the listeners if they don't know about this. So the QFS is the takeover of the central banking monetary debt system. And it's to end the financial slavery and control over the populace. And it was, it's... Um, in, it will not be influenced by government policies. It, it's entirely funded by tangible assets like gold and silver and palladium. Um, it's based, not going to be based on mere pieces of worthless paper, which is what we have, the fiat dollar. It's based on assets. So this is advanced financial um, system that's launched to eradicate the monopoly that's been placed on the planet um, and it's comprised of artificial technology, um, AI. It also has a consciousness to it in its off-world technologies. And it's, it is hundreds of years advanced than what we have that we're using now, which is very antiquated. And it's a control model to control the debt slavery. So for those that are not aware of what the QFS is or the global currency reset, the global currency reset is a level playing field of all the world's currencies globally, and everybody will then be benefit on an equal level. 
Thanks for that, Holly. Um, I was going to actually ask you that question, but since you touched on it, we'll kind of piggyback off of it a little bit. What can you say to the listeners and the people that watch this have concerns about the QFS or the digital system being part of the B system or enslaving them, you know, two, three, four, five years down the road? What what can you say to them kind of kind of allay some of their concerns with that? Well, the QFS was set up by the Alliance and the White Hats. And as you know, you have, there's two resets going side by side. I'm sure you've heard about this. You have, um, you know, the dark hats have their reset, which they're trying to unroll. They also have their own quantum computer. The white hats have this reset um, and we have the quantum financial system. And the whole purpose of, of this is, it's really been two computer systems battling each other. You have, because it's about consciousness, it's about awakening, it's about raising our level because this whole movement is a, it's a spiritual godly movement. It is not about just transacting, transactioning money and becoming wealthy. It is a transition from one way of being into another higher way of living and coexisting which is our true nature of what we are. We as human beings have been suppressed with our consciousness and dumbed down. And, you know, Jesus had said, you can do this and more. We are that powerful, but we have, that has been kept from us. So this whole movement, this transitioning is the next great flood on the planet to how do you, how do you heal people? How do you release them? through money, because we have been held and conditioned through money. So when you give an avalanche of money, and eventually we won't need money, because we will be able to manifest whatever we want, and you can barter for what you want. Um, so it is this, how to give people a level of comfort. The white, I'm sure you know about looking glass. Um, looking glass. So they know, the white hats know, you know, through looking glass that they know the end result. The end result is that we have won this. We've won this war and the war has been fought underground in all these tunnels. It's it, what they have cleaned out in the dumps is unbelievable. Yeah. And it's not just, you know, the child trafficking down there. There is so much other stuff that goes on under, under the ground. That's unbelievable. Mm. But this is, um, this is about our salvation on the planet. So they already know we've won. It's the process of getting to the end game. And, you know, it looks like we're not winning because you see this still ongoing and people are frustrated and they're discouraged and they're tired of this. Mm -hmm. However, we already know we've won. We have to go through this because the longer this drags out, it is awakening more people on the planet to really what's been going on. If they, if you fire hosed everybody, what we know and what we've been involved in, so many people would not be able to handle that truth that we know about. I mean, I know some of this stuff when I started learning about it, it was shocking to me. I, I, I couldn't believe that this went on, but we've had years of slowly being fed all this information to awaken us. So it's been a slow awakening on the planet for those that are not dialed in like we're dialed in. Mm. So to give you a comfort level that the QFS um, is you know, safe and secure, it's something put in by the Alliance and the White Hats. And by the time it is released, it's only going to be released when we are on the other side of this and it is safe to release it. Other than that, we will wait. We will wait until it's safe because, you know, they're going to fight with their last breath. Yeah, absolutely. Fair enough. Thanks, Holly, for that. Um, an interesting piece of news that came out yesterday, I'm sure you've heard it by now. It was interesting because when I was interviewing with David, it came almost at the end of our show and I had announced it and it's, it's on our Telegram channel. Saudi Prince Talil bin Abdulaziz bin Bandar al Saudi, say that five times fast, has um, has died. And it's sort of been my contention that this signals the last of the old guard with respect to the petrodollar. I wonder if you could kind of share some of your insights on that. 
Yes, there's a lot of these people, as you know, Kissinger just died, and um, you're going to see other people dying. So their dying is signaling that they're done. Like these are these are all comms, and you know their their gig is up. They're no longer in control of the world. So you're going to see more and more people start dying off. Um, I believe the Pope will be exiting soon. Mm -hmm. um, because the Catholic Church, that's going to be, I think, one of the, the hardest lessons for the people that when they realize the atrocities done from the Catholic Church and what's been done at the Vatican and what's underneath the Vatican, um, people are just going to be shocked that, you know, this church that they have believed in and, you know, worshiped it's not what they thought it was. It, it really is a satanic uh, order. Yeah. No. You're going to see more people die off and it's all, you know, they're just done. So in a sense, it's basically what we talk about where it's a parallel shifting of the old into the new world and the transition thereof. Yes. Yes. Okay. And we are transitioning. You can see it like it's becoming clearer every day. And especially with what's going on now with Iraq, you can see the tangible evidence that we are that close to this transition. Yeah. And Absolutely. I will add, you know, everybody thinks as soon as they hear a little, a little nugget that, oh my God, you know, this has happened and we're there, that this is it. I, you know, caution everybody that there's still a, a transition that needs to take place. It's not going to be instantaneous. It's not, you know, this happens and boom, we're at the banks exchanging. That's not how this is going to work. It's still, there's still a little bit of time left before I see us going and doing our, our transactions. Do you have a rough idea of what, what you think that could be? I don't like to give dates. Sure. Um, I've never been a date or a rate girl, but sure. um, you know, based on what's going on and with Iraq saying come the new year, they're not using the US dollar, I foresee it happening in that time frame. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. That that that's perfectly fine. Um, another interesting that happened this week, Holly, is the IMF is meeting, uh, I believe on December 13th with Somalia in regards to debt relief. So it appears that you're seeing more signs of Masara Jasara and debt forgiveness, which we always refer to back as Leviticus 25, 9 through 11, the debt jubilee. Um, just wonder if you might want to share some thoughts on that. Well, as we know, when the revaluation of these currencies happen, within short order will be Nasara and Gasara announced globally on the planet. And I don't know if everybody is aware of this, but Russia... I think it's two years ago, um, December, they announced that they enacted Gasara. So they've been running Gasara in Russia for two years already. Mm. The rest of the world is slowly catching up. The US has always been last. We are last on everything. The mm. reason we're last is because we are known as Satan around the world. I mean, we, we have been a strong arm we have done atrocities globally to countries and to people, and we are last for having this happen. So our announcement of Nasara will be last. Everybody else has gone before us, and that should be coming very soon, shortly thereafter the revaluation of the currencies happen. Mm, great. Thank you for that, Holly. Uh, on the backs of that, I don't know, you probably know this, but I'm not sure if everybody's aware, but um, we touched on it a while back in one of my shows that uh, the IMF actually with Iceland, I think it was about two, maybe three years ago, they they forgave their debt wholesale uh, mm -hmm. and, and restored them and made them whole. But of course, you know, the fake news isn't talking about that. So there have been proliferations of this, you know, as you know, on an ongoing basis already occurring. Yes. Yeah, it's been happening and it's been suppressed. They don't want it leaking mm -hmm. out because if other countries catch wind of this, they're going to be like, well, why not us? You know, mm -hmm. why do we have to suffer? I know in the U.S., because I have uh, people in my rooms tell me they've gotten their mortgages wiped out. Some of them, they've had student loans, they've had car loans, they've had credit mm -hmm. cards. So they've done little dribs and drabs of this, just not across the board for everybody. 
Right. But that will happen once uh, NASAR is announced. Now, I, you know, everybody wants to know, well, who's going to announce it? I believe it should be coming from the U.S. Treasury. They should make that announcement of, of some sort of this. Yeah, it's, 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 I, I agree because it's interesting you bring that up, Holly, because I was just uh, put an article on our channel that uh, the Senate is now putting a vote to uh, take uh, tax removal to the Supreme Court. So they're yes. putting the narrative out there to get, I think, the expectation set for what's coming to the to you. Exactly. Right. Because you will not pay taxes with Nasara. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was put in back when we started World War One, And, you know, they have just been taxing us. It was a voluntary tax. Right. And because we went along with it willingly, they've kept it going. And, you know, just like Federal Reserve is not a federal agency. Oh. It is from 13 families and it was right. enacted in 1913. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, there's the the three arms, which is the Vatican. It is the, the oh. religious arm. London, city of London is the financial arm and Washington DC is the military arm. Correct. Correct. So all of that will be falling. Um, I believe we'll also see King Charles um, going away. Mm -hmm. You'll see the Pope going away. Those two arms then will be down. And then the last would be Biden being gone. Yeah. And the writings on the wall for that, they're already talking about his impeachment. I mean, right. it could be so many different ways that he goes away. We don't know exactly, <clears throat> how, but it's, it's going to be happening soon. So come the new year, we should be seeing a lot of these things happen. Yeah, I, I agree. Absolutely. And, and on, that, on the backside, Holly, my contention has been, and others that I've consulted with, that um, as, as the you know, House and Senate continue to, most specifically the House continues to build that heat to a boil to get Biden impeached, uh, whoever that is, um, that, uh, <laughs> that they're going to, um, the, the deep state is basically going to create a false uh, emergency to bring him to the hospital and say that he's going to have to step down due to a medically undisclosed illness and that he's not fit to carry his duties because I think enough of society can buy into that notion it wouldn't be a real stretch for most people to you know to believe in that um also i, I you know this uh, but i don't know if most people are aware but it's interesting the origins maybe not interesting but um disturbing the origins of the the irs and all that go way back to uh uh you know the early 1900s and that they started uh, taxes as an experiment with uh, alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. And they found just like with welfare, with FDR, that it worked so effectively, they just had a role to the continuation and, and just never told anybody. So, you know, right. pretty much everything we've lived is a lie. And now we're having to, to kind of relearn our history. It is. And, you know, talking about relearn our history, I'm sure you've heard of Tartaria, that whole history has been wiped off our history books. They've rewritten everything. There was such technology back then. And mm. it's basically, we've had to start from scratch again. Yeah. And, you know, we think that we're an advanced society now compared to what happened in the 1800s. Well, they had, they had all free energy. They had uh, motor cars. They had, um, you know, just healing things that that have been taken from us and it i'm sure it was the the illuminati group that decided that they wanted to control the world and how do you control it you wipe out the history and you start over and you have a whole you know all our generations grow up believing whatever they write in those history books sure. that is the history you know that we think it is true but it's not I really cannot wait for disclosure when that is, you know, all the truth that's been suppressed from us is given to us. And that's also going to be another rude awakening for people that are not even aware that we've been lied to. Yeah. That's going to be a harsh reality. You're speaking to scores of people who are watching, who are dealing with this present company included with our families and the cognitive mm -hmm. dissonance that kind of you know, lingers throughout. So yeah, you said a mouthful when you were talking about that. Yes. Uh, want to respect your time, obviously, because you're very busy. So I just have one other, you know, main question for you, and then I'll kind of let you have your parting thoughts to the to the audience. Uh, it was announced today on uh, 
uh, X-22 Spotlight with Bill Holter. Uh, that, uh, and this has kind of been bantied about for a while, but it's nice to hear sort of a reprise of what's going on. Texas has officially gotten enough signatures, over 100,000 signatures. I think they needed 97,000 to uh, have a non-binding referendum for 2024 in order to secede from the U.S. and restore the republic. I wonder if you might just touch on that. Well, there's been talk of Texas wanting to secede from the U.S. and they they have been really a forerunner for a lot of our our new government being established there. Mm -hmm. And I'm just thinking by them making that move, maybe that's you know setting the stage for the republic being revealed by succeeding from the United States, as we know, this is a corporation, the right. corporation that was enacted in 1871, mm -hmm. and that's going to be going away, and we will go back to our true republic. I've also read that Texas has um, asked to be part of BRICS Nation. Yes. So, you know, that's very, very interesting what they are doing in that state mm -hmm. is really paving the way for all the other states to follow suit yeah so, that's a, that was gonna be my that's a great point that was gonna be my follow-up question holly is once texas officially an accident establishes establishes this how many other states do you surmise might follow suit i think everybody you know except obviously the one the states that have the uh the democrat democrat governors that follow the old narrative and don't want to give up power but, you know, when this transition happens, everybody will be removed. Um, you will not have this anymore. We're going to go through really a very turmoil time in the history of the United States because everything that we have been living is a lie. And people are going to be shocked when they realize the truth and, you know, how bad our supposed, quote unquote, um, you know, people we elect in office, mm. they're not serving our purpose. They're they're bought and sold. You know, they, I don't know if you even know of this, when uh, somebody is elected into office, they are given a credit card from the Vatican. And if they use it, then they are, they are bought. They, yep. your, your voting decisions are determined. Once you use that card, you're told what to vote and how to vote. Right. So there's just a you know few uh, congressmen and senators that have not done that that are are true patriots, and you know they have said ninety percent of Congress and Senate will be removed when this yeah. happens because they're they're not you know the they're not serving humanity they're they're bought servants. Well, they're they're too compromised, like you said. Yeah. Um, and one more question, I promise, and I'll, I'll turn it over to you for the final thoughts. But um, so there's, because you have a vast knowledge of many things, I, I'd like people to hear your thoughts on this. Uh, it's been surmised by, again, several people, X-22 being one of them, that uh, once the Biden is removed, right, on the backs of that, that Kamala will take over and Gavin Newsom's, as we call him here in California. Uh, we know that's to draw out, you know, the enemy to the public figure. But if they do, in fact, take that corporate position, how long roughly do you think they would stay in there before it all gets on? Well, head? you know, Kamala is not a U.S. born citizen, so she right. cannot hold that office. Mm -hmm. So when this happens, it it should be a very swift turnover that she's not viable to hold that office. Right. Um, I don't know exactly how they're going to do this, how that whole transition is going to be. I've heard so many different stories on it and you know obviously they're not going to tell us because they don't want any of us to know as you know things leak real quickly in in these circles and mm. you know it's spread like wildfire so they put out a lot of misinformation and disinformation and people get very confused by that and I've learned to just sit back and take in all the information and not get caught up in any of it and, and just watch it play out um, because it changes. All the information changes. You know, you hear it's gonna be this way and then it's gonna be this. And even from people dialed in at high places, they get misinformation because again, they don't know who is compromised 
in this because there's good people that are acting bad and bad people acting good. So you've got to flush them out. And, you know, they said when this is over, we're going to see some, some people that we thought were really bad are really good and vice versa. Yeah, that's great. It's a great point. Holly, uh, thanks for being on the podcast. We appreciate it. Um, I'll leave any last thoughts you have for the audience and where can people learn more about your work? So I have with my partner, Chris, we have set up the New Earth Foundations. It's New Earth Foundations with an S dot org. It's all one word. There's a password, lowercase, new earth, and you can join that. And we are doing global projects um, encompassing all the, the 12 major projects that Trump has put out. We are doing that. I'll just read a, a quick little thing on that for people that want to join, because most people don't know how to do projects. It's overwhelming. And we're going to have... Um, set up all the major uh, projects. We're gonna have full accounting with audit support being done. There'll be global regional managers. There'll be in-country managers. We're gonna have marketing and communication teams, project managers. There'll be security services, purchasing division for you know building these projects out, um, HR. Um, so most people, if you take your project and start it from the ground up, it's overwhelming with what you have to do. So we are creating an in-house umbrella for people to join. You know, so many people have water projects or food projects or um, energy projects. And instead of everybody reinventing the wheel over and over again and doing the same project, let's join forces, work together get a model and take that model and you can go, you know, wherever you want and, and do your project in whatever country or state you want to do it in. I also have um, my telegram rooms where we go one, we go all room number two and room number four. So people can find me there. Um, and I do my podcast healing with love and you can find those podcasts on YouTube. So that's where I am. And I appreciate you having me on. It's been a pleasure and thank you. And, you know, the last bit for the listeners that are tired and discouraged and want to give up. My big saying is never, ever give up. Never. Just keep going one day at a time. We are getting there. We're making progress. We're getting to the end. You can see it. It's very tangible in the news now. And I followed the news of the world because that is proof when it's in writing globally that things are being done and you can see it. So the world is changing. It's not gonna take that much longer for this transition to happen because we are on the tail end of it. We're on the cusp of this happening and everybody just continue to work on yourself because that really is how you raise the consciousness of the planet by working on yourself, healing yourself, becoming a better person. If you need help in that, you know, tune into the podcast I do with Dr. Matt Singer, because that helps you to become a better person when you removed all those trapped emotions. So again, thank you for having me on. It was a pleasure. And, you know, keep on keeping on what you're doing. It's awesome. Thanks, Holly. Thanks for being here. We look forward to having you again in the future. And you're absolutely right. God does have the final say and he wins. So thanks again. Uh, Merry Christmas and we'll see you soon. Thank you.